Hi friends, my name is host Eric. I'm the host of Talking with Famous People. I'm a former professional debate coach and an advocate for the primacy of philosophy over other sciences and understanding things in general, just so you know my frame of reference going in. And I'm talking today about dimensions. People talk about dimensions all the time, and they use the word in very strange ways, like, well, this person might be from another dimension or something. So... I was watching a video a little while ago that was talking about dimensions and how there might be 10 dimensions and stuff like that. And it prompted me to do a little thinking and a little armchair philosophy seems to resolve this matter pretty definitively in a way that I think has been failed to be resolved heretofore. So the thing to remember about dimensions, whether it's one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions, or four dimensions, which includes time, is that dimensions are a way that human beings articulate determinations and knowledge about specific things. In our normal understanding of dimensions, there we understand we're able to articulate or communicate specific facts about physical objects in space. And if we want to communicate the dynamic aspects of those physical objects in space, we use the fourth dimension of time. If we don't want to articulate the dynamism of any given physical object in space, then we don't need to include time in our calculations. The thing is, we wouldn't need to understand dimensions at all, except we want to be able to not just understand a thing in its immediate application, but we want to be able to communicate to other people things that we know about that thing. Um, or we want to be able to determine things that we can make use those determinations to affect the correct, correct solution later. Such that I might want to measure this shelf to make sure that this thing I'm going to get is going to fit on it, right? That's making the objects in space communicable between this moment and that by appealing to a standard set of measurements in three dimensions. <clears throat> so, because dimensions, including time, are first and foremost aspects of communication before they're anything else, right? They're ways that we communicate meaningful things about reality. Keeping this in mind, when we talk about other dimensions that people can't perceive, like the fifth dimension, the sixth dimension, that's a trick of math that doesn't even produce a meaningful visual representation of this dimension, but merely says, since we're representing these dimensions in this fashion related to each other, in theory, we could add other physical dimensions that would relate in some way that they don't. Um, and imagine a universe that allowed math in multiple, in more than four dimensions. Sure, we can create math for fifth and sixth and seventh dimensions and such, but those dimensions are not real things. Just as it is not possible for me to genuinely say this thing has height, it has width, it has depth, it decays over time. There is no other possible way for me to articulate information about this, not because there aren't other dimensions or something like that, but rather because we have all the tools we need to articulate every specific thing about every object in space with just four. And the reason is because that's how our observation dictates reality be. So, where am I going with this? Well, I'm not just here to, to diss on the idea of extra dimensions as articulated in math with all these sort of fractal patterns trying to imply an, an additional dimension when it's really just an example of nested third dimensions. But it's not, I'm not just here to shit on that, okay? I'm here to point out that there actually are other dimensions when we understand what a dimension is. A dimension is a way for people to communicate specific things about stuff, right? Accordingly, other dimensions are logical consistency, for example. Conditional logic is a dimension. It's a way that humans can 
communicate articulable constants about stuff. So, for example, if I say, uh, if P, then Q, and Q, therefore P, it's invalid because it's not always the case when we replace those things. If I say, if P, then Q, and P, therefore Q, it is valid because it doesn't matter what we replace those things with. It will always be necessarily true given the conditionality of it, right? So just as I can tell you, this cabinet is necessarily this deep, seven inches deep. And if you come to it and measure it, you will determine the same thing. I can tell you the same thing about a sentence. If P then Q and P therefore Q is necessarily valid, no matter what words you put in there for P, Q, um, it doesn't matter because of the grammatical structure of conditionality is a way for us to evaluate communicatively, communicatively constant truths about language and communication. Another dimension then would be something like your personal interest, what you hold precious, what's important to you. That's a significant deciding factor and it's something you can communicate to other people. No, don't take that rock. That's my favorite rock. I love it so much. I'm keeping that rock. Helps us to determine the status of, say, ownership, importance to this person, the likely impact of other, upon others, etc. Now, these things aren't dimensions in the physics of space, but metaphysics is called metaphysics because it's the physics of physics. It subsumes physics, right? So it's true that we can, we can happily work with just a hammer and a screwdriver when dealing with things in physical space. They only need three dimensions to describe everything. Four, if you include dynamism. In contrast, agency is a little more complicated, but just as in need of a dimensionality parsing to understand how aspects of consciousness and human experience are communicable. We can communicate about words. So I can deem that person's communication to be not worthy of listening to or worthy of listening to based on its logical consistency, validity, etc. Or I could determine whether that person's statement is worth listening to or not listening to based on whether it's consistent with what I want to hear, which is much more common. <laughs> Both of these things are dimensions that apply to the dynamic aspects of agency in a way that time is a factor in the dynamic relationship between objects and existence over time, you know. The difference is with language-based things, it's turn-based. So it's there may be a frequency with which a given statement is made. There may be a speed with which it is executed, but the actual meanings of it, the words, it doesn't matter how or what is the process of executing it. They mean the same things. They're static and they can be parsed independent of the speaker. So these are the things that are necessary for something to qualify as a dimension. Just as something to be a currency needs to have non-counterfeitability, divisibility, and, um, and scarcity, so too, does to be a physical object in the world, do you need to have the following things? Length, depth, width, right? It's additionally the case that with a currency, it needs to be have some other things going on if you want to account for the full stuff of it, such as transaction costs, um, public, private, you know, like how much does it keep a record of, of, uh, hi doggy, how much does it keep a record of, yes, hello, hello, how much does it keep a record of your transactions, etc. Various other factors may come into play in term, determining whether something actually is used as a currency, but, um, to be to qualify as as currency worthy it just needs to have those three qualities right it needs to be scarce non-counterfeitable and divisible S similarly to qualify as an object in space something needs to have at least length width and depth 
and it and like a currency it doesn't need to have anything else although to be useful to us there may be other factors we need to consider so what's the takeaway from this well there are probably eight dimensions and they are as follows length width depth time consistency interest experience and intuition those are the ways that we decide determine and know things for communication purposes and that's all that a dimension is 